The National Boll Weevil Eradication Program ranks close to Eli Whitney's invention of the cotton gin as one of the greatest advancements ever for the U.S. cotton industry. This federal, state, grower cost share program has helped thousands of U.S. cotton growers become more competitive and has been a plus for the environment. A little more than a century ago, the boll weevil migrated from Mexico to the U.S and spread rapidly throughout the cotton belt. Since then, it has been acknowledged as the single most important cotton pest and has cost America's cotton producers more than $15 billion from yield losses and costs to control the insect pest. Boll weevil control required multiple insecticide applications throughout the cotton growing season. Unfortunately, these insecticides also reduced beneficial insects that provided natural control of other cotton pests thereby increasing the chance of other cotton pest outbreaks. In 1958, the National Cotton Council officially recognized the economic havoc the boll weevil was wreaking on U.S. cotton production. With congressional leadership and support, a USDA boll weevil research lab was created, followed by eradication experiments, a trial eradication program, and an area-wide boll weevil control program on Texas's high plains and rolling plains to prevent the weevil's migration. In the late 1970s, the National Boll Weevil Eradication Program was launched by USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, APHIS, along the Virginia-North Carolina border. The success of the program encouraged producers to seek state legislation allowing producer referendums to support assessments typically providing 70% of the funds necessary for eradication programs. The program later expanded into other southeastern states, followed by southwestern Arizona, southern California, and a portion of northwest Mexico. Later programs were launched in Oklahoma, New Mexico, the Mid-South, and Texas. The boll weevil has been eradicated in the southeast states of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Likewise, the boll weevil has been eradicated from Alabama, Tennessee, Missouri, Arkansas, and Mississippi. We have not caught a boll weevil in any of that cotton in the last two years. It has been the most successful program that we have had. The boll weevil eradication has been a smashing success for Mississippi producers financially. Prior to uh, BT cotton, we were putting out so many applications of insecticide that were controlling boll weevil without even knowing it. BT cotton came in, those applications stopped, and the boll weevil eradication moved in at the same time. It was a seamless transition. It's a whole different game as far as uh, not having to manage and spray and spray and spray. We just don't do that anymore. I'm in an urban area. So by not having to spray boll weevils, then I don't have complaints from the city people. It was a very successful program. We had some issues that were, uh, because of our irrigation practices, that made it uh, difficult to eradicate. But we managed to get through that and got over all that and uh, turned out to be very successful. And all the growers have uh, benefited from this eradication program. There are some parts of the belt they really have very little spraying to do. So we're doing a whole lot less spraying than we did in the past. Beneficial has been able to take over and save that pesticide load in the environment. So everybody gains, not only the grower, but the general public also. The far west is now boll weevil free in the states of California, Arizona, Oklahoma, and New Mexico. Those that didn't think they had weevils and, and they were very hesitant to get in the program, but those same people now are saying, you know, this thing's been good for us, so that's, it's, it's really worked. And the problems we've got in South Texas now, we will work those out too. Texas continues to move the boll weevil free line across the state as the eradication battle continues. We've seen this public-private partnership of, of federal government, in many cases state government, and cotton growers uh, across the cotton belt uh, come together. Uh, in a program to see uh, uh, all but uh, a couple of areas in the state of Texas eradicated completely with the boll weevil. If we would have stayed in the mode of, of having to fight weevils continually, it would have become cost prohibitive. We would have not been able to compete and stay in the marketplace. We would have had to change to an alternative crop. So it, it's meant the, the difference between being in the business and not being in the business, essentially. To finish the program, 
it's uh, very important to us that we be able to eliminate the weevil in Texas. So for us to ever be able to be completely eradicated where that we don't have to worry about the weevil, then we need all the weevils out of this system that, we're, that are within wheel distance of, of our cotton over in the southeast. There's no way that the state of Texas and the growers in the buffer zone can finance the cost of this operation without it being a joint operation from the whole industry. We cannot expect the growers in Texas to protect us. We've got to help protect ourselves. And the only way we can do it is participate in this program. As long as boll weevil is there, and as long as it has not been eradicated, then it has the capability of move, to move, and it may show up in any of the cotton producing states and begin what happened a century ago all over again. When we began eradication in Texas, we found as we cleared areas out with bow weevil that we would get reinfestation into those areas in the fall of the year and the distances that those weevils were moving could be as much as 150 miles. And we need to be assured that the weevil will not make a comeback. And if Texas is a corridor to get weevils to Arkansas, then we need to make sure there are not any there. A big outbreak would be very difficult to handle, so we need the funds to, Texas needs the funds to eradicate the weevil there. We've had some challenges of late with uh, tropical storms and hurricanes and finishing that job in South Texas. The active battle zones in Texas have had setbacks, resulting from weevils being carried by hurricane winds into areas that were nearly weevil free. Hurricane winds destroyed many of the traps used to detect weevils and initiate control. Access to the trap areas was reduced due to debris and excessive water. These factors allowed weevil populations to increase while program operations were being restored. Additionally, the warm climate and lack of a killing freeze for these plants results in nursery areas to maintain or increase boll weevil populations. Cotton plants along roadsides, fence rows, and other non-cropping areas can result from seed inadvertently dropped during harvest or dispersed by wind. Even one plant, even one plant can be a problem in bow weevil eradication. Similarly, seed dropped in a cotton field at harvest may germinate the following year, although the producer planted the field to corn or some other crop. The results are numerous cotton fruit utilized by boll weevils for reproduction sites. During the fall of 2008, the Texas Boll Weevil Eradication Foundation began seek and destroy efforts to remove non-crop cotton plants along roadsides, fence rows, etc. Additionally, the foundation began trapping prior year cotton fields during 2009, regardless of what current crop was planted. These efforts, along with support and active assistance by producers to remove any non-crop cotton plants, have advanced the eradication line. The goal is to eradicate the boll weevil from all cotton producing areas of the U.S. and adjacent areas of northern Mexico. Producers have passed referendums to support the advancement of the program. Coordinated efforts with Mexico's program enhance the successful progression of both U.S. and Mexico toward a weevil free status. There's enthusiastic support in Mexico uh, from the growers for the programs. And, uh, and they've, with uh, minimum resources, they've been able to accomplish a lot. The successful completion of boll weevil eradication in Texas is vital to avoid weevil population growth that would spread throughout all cotton producing states. So it's really important that we get the job finished. So what that doesn't, we don't face that threat for every year that weevils could move into some, some place and recolonize and start that loss all over again. It's been a tough row, but it's been one that we've methodically worked and continue to keep the pressure on the weevil. Boll weevil eradication is accomplished by a combination of tactics, including trapping with the use of pheromones, destruction of harvested plants to reduce overwintering, and insecticide applications when needed. Trapping also is the key element in monitoring for reinfestation and to determine necessary insecticide application. Anything like this, whether, whether it's equipment or, or new new uh, methods of doing things are all, and, and this was the same thing with bovine eradication. I, the first thing I'd hear, it won't work, and uh, it does work. Historically, producers have paid 70% of the program's operational costs. Federal funds covered the remaining expenses, including overhead and capital equipment. There's a lot of money uh, been spent from both sides, and uh, we, we surely 
uh, don't, don't, don't want to have to go through this again. It's been a very successful program. When you go two years and hadn't caught a boll weaver east of the Mississippi River, that's unthinkable. A lot of family farms and farmers uh, can continue to stay on the land and produce a, 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 a fiber that is in demand worldwide. It's been paramount in keeping growers in business, in, in the business of growing cotton. Operations, oversight, and administrative services of the programs are provided by various regional grower or state grower managed eradication foundations. APHIS manages federal program activities and provides technical assistance for cooperating grower organizations. And it's been a, an excellent, I think, uh, investment by the state legislature uh, to keep this program on sound financial footing, uh, which it's questionable whether we would have been able to, to continue the program without their funding. So it's been paramount in, in uh, keep, keeping us uh, up and running and on, on good physical uh, sound footing. Societal desires for a reduction in reliance on insecticides coupled with economic constraints forcing producers to minimize economical yield losses to insects are both met with the boll weevil eradication program. A dramatic reduction in insecticide applications has been documented for weevil-free states. The reduced spraying has enabled beneficial insects to multiply and prey on other cotton insect pests, further lessening the need for insecticides. It's progressed and made, made it better and they've been more successful quicker based on everybody's pulling together and paying for it. The growers want it done as quickly as it can, and that's the strength of the program is they really direct where this program is going to go. And all of us understand that this is a joint effort. Uh, we may be many different entities, but uh, in all, we're one entity trying to accomplish the same goal, and it takes all of us to do that. It's very valuable to the farms to be able to, to be rid of the boll weevil. Huge benefits both to the growers and the overall economy uh, could not have happened without that partnership with uh, USDA APHIS. U.S. cotton was produced with an average of 2.78 insecticide applications during 2007 as compared to 15 to 20 prior to boll weevil eradication and release of BT cotton. Truly an industry success story.